So what else can we learn about face representations? Let me mention a couple of other old, very old experiments that are very low tech and very simple, but I think deeply revealing. Okay, um, so this is an experiment done back in the early 90s um, when um, um, police departments used to have these um, kind of automated, I mean, they weren't even really very computer based, but simple ways of generating faces from descriptions of parts. They're much better versions now. Um, but what these um, experimentalists did was to either teach people faces, and so they would teach people one of these. These two differ very slightly in just the nose, and they would teach that that's Larry, and this is Joe, and this is Bob. They would teach about 20 faces, and then they would later test people's memory for those faces in one of two ways. One, they would say, which is Larry? Or they would say, which is Larry's nose? Or which is Larry's eyes or mouth? Okay. Now, if you think about it, in a way, that should be easier. You've re removed all the other parts of the face that are identical in the two ca cases you're supposed to choose between and just isolated the key difference. So which of those is Larry's nose? That should be easier. You've just isolated the key thing. But what uh, Tanaka and Farah found is that people do better with the whole face than with the parts. And they reasoned from that, and some other data we'll talk about in a second, that your mental representation of a face isn't like a bag of parts. It isn't like a photograph of what the eyes look like, and a photograph of what the mouth looks like, and a photograph of what the, um, what did I say? The never, whatever other part looks like, all thrown in a bag in your head. That's not what it's like. If it was, you should do at least as well here as here. Everybody get that idea? But based on the data I just showed you, that's not very impressive yet. How else could you account for this result? How else might you be able to explain why subjects would do better when asked which is, remember they studied Larry, Joe, Bob, Susie, whoever, images like that. Why else might they do better saying which is Larry than which is Larry's nose, even if they didn't have this kind of holistic representation in their head? Are you guys sold? You're buying holistic face representation just from that little speck of data? Well, you guys are pushovers. Yeah, that's what they studied for God's sake, right? If, I t if we spend this whole class talking about Mars levels applied to um, face recognition, I could test you in the midterm and ask you to apply Mars levels to face recognition or to scene processing. Scene processing would be a better question, but it would be harder. It wasn't the thing you studied. You'd have to generalize, right? So like, duh asking the thing they studied they, is easier than asking them to generalize. Everybody get that? I think that's sort of what you were saying. Okay, so that weakens this result on its own, but Tanaka and Farah were no dummies. That wasn't all they did, in fact. They also did the same experiment on houses. So subjects learned houses like this, and they learned this is Larry's house, and this is Joe's house, and this is Bob's house, and this is Susie's house, etc. And then they were tested on the houses, asking, um, which of two houses was Larry's, or which of two doors was Larry's? And what do you think happened with the houses? Should be easier. Which, wait, which should be easier? The house. What in particular? There's two comparisons. There's accuracy at doing the house task, the whole house task, and there's accuracy at doing the house part task. How do you think those two differed from each other? House parts versus households. Well, that's what you'd guess based on the face thing but that's not what they found. And that was part of their, so they found that with the case of faces, you do better with the whole face. With the case of houses, you do better with the part, okay? And so they inferred from that that this is something about faces, that you mandatorily process the whole thing, not as a set of parts. Whereas for other things that aren't faces, you, you get a set of parts in your head and you store those, okay? So another sort of qualitative difference between the kind of representation we extract for faces and the kind of representation we extract for houses. Everybody got that? Do you buy the argument? Can you see, whenever I say that, the question is, does that inference that faces are processed more holistically than houses, does that inference, inference follow from the data I just described to you? And the way you think about it is, can you come up with a different account of those same data that doesn't involve imputing more holistic representations for faces and houses. What do you think? You can come up with a different account. You're not gonna buy it just from this dopey little low-tech experiment that there's a fundamental difference in how we represent faces, they're holistic, 
and houses are part based just from that, are you? <laughs> How else can you account for those data then? Um, Look at the stimuli. Well, the t exactly, the stimuli are totally different. They're totally different. How could we go from these weird little crappy 1990s stimuli to make a big global inference <sighs> about the difference between faces and houses when there's so many differences in the stimuli? Right? This is kind of schematic and line based and that has shading and like what the hell, right? Everybody get that? So you might say, no, it's not that faces are generally more holistic, uh, represented more holistically than houses. Um, maybe instead, these stimuli just differ. And if we had, say, photographs of houses, they would behave just like photographs of faces. Everybody get that? That would be an alternative account. This is, what, this is one of the key central things we want to do in this class, is think of which inferences follow from which data. And again, it's all about trying to think of, can I account for those data in some other way? If you can, then the inference doesn't follow. OK? But now, as I said before, Tanaka and Farah are no dummies. They didn't stop there. They found a beautiful control stimulus that's exactly like a face, but not processed like a face. What would that be? I've already told you. Just like a face, but not processed like a face. What would that be? Yes, what's your name? Josh. Josh. Exactly. I'm an atheist, but inverted faces are God's gift to the face researcher. Because they're exactly what we need at this critical moment. We're trying to say, we want a, we want a stimulus that looks just like a face, but isn't processed like a face. And this has got a million problems. But inverted face is perfect. Same stimulus, just upside down. Everybody get why that's the perfect control? So when Tanaka and Farah did this experiment with inverted faces, what happened? This effect goes away with inverted faces. Now subjects do better asking which is Larry's nose when asked which is Larry's nose than they do when asked which is Larry. And that shows us that it's not just something about the shading or the nature of the stimulus. It's the same stimulus. It's just upside down. It tells us that when you process uh, right side up faces, you mandatorily process the whole face, not as a set of parts, but as a whole. And you don't do that with an inverted face, and you don't do that with a house. Isn't that cool? Again, super low tech. They probably did this with paper and pencil. Maybe they had some crappy computer at the time, just barely, right? Um, everybody get the logic here? OK. I'm going through this just to give you the gist of how powerful low tech behavioral methods can be in revealing the nature of internal representations. OK? OK. Um, OK, one more um, face of boy. I totally mistimed this lecture. Everything's going to roll over to next time. Never mind. Um, OK, oh, I blew the demo. But it's on, I, I forgot to take it off the slide anyway. Never mind. OK, I'll just describe the result without the, the pseudo demo. You can probably tap into it. Like You can probably tell the top half of that face is Obama spliced onto somebody else. But as I say, I live in a cave. I don't know who the somebody else is. You guys probably all do. Um, so. Um, and, but you can sort of see Obama there, but it's a little hard to see. And if you compare that to here, do, do you guys share the intuition that it's easier to see the Obama-ness on the top here than it is here? OK, that's called the composite effect. It's measured behaviorally by the reaction time and accuracy uh, of people's performance when you ask them to identify the top half of a face in those two cases. They do better when it's misaligned than when it's aligned. And the idea is that. What that reveals is that your face system, again, wants to process the whole face. And so even though you're saying, no, 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 ignore the bottom, ignore the bottom, just look at the top, it's, it's going to process the whole damn thing and thwart you. That's what it's set up to do. That's what it's going to do. Whereas you can thwart it by messing up the stimulus. Okay. Now, if we just showed that performance was worse identifying the top half of the face here than here, would that be enough to infer? that face processing is holistic? No. Tell me your name again. Annie. Oh, Annie. And tell me why. Why wouldn't that be enough? Or, just doesn't feel very impressive yet, does it? Yeah. Can anybody think of another experiment that you'd want to do related to things we've been discussing that would make that a stronger, a stronger inference? Again, the inference is worse performance identifying the top of the face here than here. That's the data. The inference is. 
your face system wants to process the whole face at once as a whole. What could we do to make that inference stronger? Well, how, what would that tell you? Yes. Is this something about holistic processing of faces? Well, let's test it on something that isn't a face, like a car. That's been done. You don't get it for cars. What would be an even better control stimulus than a car? Do it upside down. Yes. As I said, it's always the answer. The perfect control stimulus for the face is the inverted face. When you do that experiment with upside down faces, you do not get that effect. People are not worse at identifying that half than that half. OK? Again, all of this goes together to say that your face system wants to process whole faces, not parts of faces, um, and that it is designed to work on upright faces, and that those two things go together. Everybody got it? OK? All right, so I think that's all what I just said.